and that, esteemed colleagues, is why I believe the Florbulac species should be immediately quarantined and studied for their fascinating ability to projectile vomit their own intestines as a defense mechanism droned on Doctor. Zilblax, a gelatinous blob of a being, its voice modulator producing the most monotonous tones this side of the galaxy. Scrixel, the praying mantis-like alien, fought the urge to fall into a boredom-induced coma. He glanced around the circular lecture hall, noticing other members of the galactic system's chancellors in various states of disinterest. Some were discreetly playing games on their data pads, others were entering hibernation cycles, and he could have sworn he saw one particularly adventurous gaseous entity attempt to escape through an air vent. Just as Scrixel contemplated the sweet release of death, or at least a strategically timed equipment malfunction salvation, came in the form of the panel moderator, a towering crystal being named Crystallos. Thank you, Doctor. Zilblax for that. Riveting presentation Crystallos chimed, his crystalline body resonating with each word. I'm sure we'll all think twice before accepting a dinner invitation from a Florbulax. A ripple of relieved laughter spread through the audience. Scrixel's antennae perked up. It was finally his turn to present. He'd been waiting for this moment for eight stellar cycles, and by the great hive mother, he wasn't going to let Dr. Puke Gut steal his thunder. As he made his way to the podium, Scrixel couldn't help but overhear snippets of conversation from the audience. Another groundbreaking discovery, I bet muttered a sentient gas cloud to its neighbor, a silicon-based rockoid. Ten credits say it's another planet full of slime molds, the rockoid rumbled back. Scrixel's mandibles clicked in amusement. Oh, if they only knew, he thought. Reaching the podium, Scrixel's four segmented legs bounced lightly in place, partly from excitement and partly because the cleaning droid had overwaxed the floor again. His bright green exoskeleton gleamed under the harsh light of the hall, and he fluttered his thorax wing to command attention. The room fell silent all eyes and various sensory organs fixed on him. Greetings, distinguished members of the Galactic System's Chancellor's Scrixel began, his voice filled with barely contained excitement. I stand before you today not to discuss intestine hurling species fascinating as they may be, but to reveal a secret project that we of the High Council have been working on for the last eight stellar cycles. He paused for dramatic effect, reveling in the sudden interest that permeated the room. Even Doctor... Zilblax's gelatinous form seemed to solidify slightly in anticipation. Now, I know what you're thinking, Scrixkel continued, his tone dripping with sarcasm. Oh joy, another presentation about some backwater planet with single-celled organisms that can photosynthesize slightly better than the last ones we found. Well, my dear colleagues, prepare to have your minds blown figuratively speaking. Of course, we don't want another incident like the telepathic overload of 2876. A few nervous chuckles rippled through the audience. The clean-up from that particular event had taken decades. Scrixel activated the large circular holographic projector behind him with a dramatic flourish. A small blue orb materialized, floating and rotating serenely. Behold, he exclaimed, his voice reaching a pitch that made several crystalline beings in the front row vibrate uncomfortably. This, my friends, is Planet X-739, or as I like to call it, the Cosmic Curveball. The mantis-like alien began to pace back and forth, his excitement building. Now, you might be wondering, what's so special about this little blue marble? Well, let me tell you, it's not the planet itself that's remarkable. Oh no, it's where we found it. Scrixel paused again, scanning the room. He could practically taste the curiosity in the air, quite literally, for some of the gaseous entities present. This planet, teeming with life, mind you, is located in what we've affectionately dubbed the Cosmic Void Bubble of Doom. A collective gasp echoed through the hall, followed by excited murmurs and the distinct sound of a rockoid nearly crumbling in shock. That's right, folks, Scrixel continued, barely containing his glee. This entire solar system is nestled snugly inside a void bubble spanning nearly ten light years in diameter. It's like finding a tropical paradise in the middle of a frozen wasteland, or a functioning government in a Zorbaxian colony. More laughter rippled through the audience, along with a few indignant huffs from the Zorbaxian delegates. Scrixel manipulated the holographic display, zooming out to show the entire solar system. As you can see, we have ten planets, two asteroid belts, and four gas giants, one of which is so massive it's practically a failed star. It's like this system couldn't decide what it wanted to be when it grew up.
so it became everything. The mantis-like alien's eyes gleamed with excitement. But here's the kicker, my esteemed colleagues. Not only is this system improbably placed, not only does it defy everything we know about celestial mechanics and void dynamics, but that little blue planet, it's absolutely teeming with life. Another wave of gasps and exclamations swept through the hall. Skrixel was on a roll now, his mandibles clicking rapidly in excitement. I know, I know. It sounds impossible. Void pockets like this are usually colder than a frost giant's backside. The chances of finding life here were about as likely as finding a modest quasar or a punctual chronovore. And yet, here we are. Skrixel's antennae twitched as he prepared to deliver the coup de grace. But wait, there's more. The dominant species on this planet. They call themselves humans, and let me tell you, they are just. Built different. The hive mind collective in the back row buzzed curiously. Different how its thousand voices asked in unison. Skrixel's mandible spread in what passed for a grin among his species. Oh, where do I even begin? These humans are like the universe decided to throw every improbable trait into a biological blender and hit Puri. He began ticking off points on his segmented appendages. First off, they're endurance predators. Yes, you heard that right. These squishy, hairless bipeds will literally chase their prey until it dies of exhaustion. It's like they took one look at the food chain and said, Nah, we'll just run after our dinner until it gets tired of running away. Laughter mixed with disbelieving mutters filled the hall. But wait, there's more Skrixel continued, his voice rising with each revelation. These humans have a bizarre fascination with consuming substances that are technically poisonous to them. They call it recreational chemistry, but I call it playing Russian roulette with your digestive system. A sulfuric acid-based life form in the front row gurgled in confusion. Surely you jest, Skrixel. No species would willingly ingest toxins for. Fun. Skrixel's antennae wiggled in amusement. Oh, my dear corrosive friend, if only that were the least of their peculiarities. These humans have entire industries dedicated to producing these recreational toxins they ferment plant matter, distill grains, and even purposely spoil perfectly good dairy products. And get this, they consider some of these concoctions to be delicacies. The hall erupted in a cacophony of laughter, disbelief, and what sounded suspiciously like a methane breather having a gas attack. But their culinary adventures are just the appetizer in this cosmic feast of weirdness Skrixel pressed on, riding the wave of his audience's reactions. Let's talk about their sleep habits, shall we? Unlike any sensible species that enters a restorative hibernation cycle, when required, humans need to shut down their consciousness for several hours every single day. And here's the kicker if they don't get enough of this sleep. They become cranky, irrational, and even hallucinatory. The air perpetually awake Enigoid sparked in confusion. How do they accomplish anything if they're unconscious for a third of their lives? Skrexel's mandibles clicked rapidly in what passed for chuckling among his kind. Oh, that's the best part. They've built entire civilizations, developed advanced technologies, and even started exploring their own solar system all while spending a significant portion of their time in a state of voluntary unconsciousness. It's like they're playing the game of life with a self-imposed handicap and somehow still managing to level up. The mantis-like alien paused to let this sink in, enjoying the mix of amusement and bewilderment on the faces and other sensory apparatuses of his colleagues. Now, you might be thinking, surely, Skrixel, there can't be more. Oh, but there is, my friends. There is so much more, he began pacing again, his excitement palpable. Let's discuss their information processing capabilities, shall we? These humans have brains that are, quite frankly, ridiculously oversized for their body mass. It's like they're walking around with supercomputers in their skulls. A quantum computer being beeped inquisitively. Surely that must make them hyper-rational and logical beings. Skrexel's antennae quivered with barely suppressed laughter. One would think so, wouldn't they? But no, these massive brains of theirs seem to be in a constant state of civil war. They can solve complex mathematical equations one moment and then believe their fortunes are determined by the positions of celestial bodies the next. They create breathtaking works of art and literature, then turn around and argue passionately about which direction a roll of cleaning fabric should be oriented. The hall filled with a mixture of laughter and confused murmurs. But here's where it gets really interesting, Skrixel continued, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial tone. 
these humans have managed to harness the power of their cognitive dissonance and turn it into a superpower. They call it creativity, and let me tell you, it's both terrifying and awe-inspiring. He manipulated the holographic display, showing various human inventions and artistic creations. Look at this. They've created machines that can fly, despite being heavier than air. They've harnessed the power of atomic nuclei for both destruction and energy production. They've even figured out how to trick rocks into thinking by running lightning through them. A silicon-based life form shifted uncomfortably at this last statement. And don't even get me started on their art, Scrixle exclaimed, his excitement reaching fever pitch. They create visual representations that don't exist in reality, compose sound waves that serve no evolutionary purpose other than to elicit emotional responses, and write down sequences of abstract symbols that can make other humans laugh, cry, or contemplate their existence. It's madness. I tell you. Beautiful, chaotic madness. The hive mind collective buzzed again. But surely, Scrixel, a species this. Unstable must be a danger to themselves and others. How have they not destroyed themselves? Scrixel's mandibles spread in what could only be described as a smirk. Ah, now that's the real kicker. You see, these humans are not just survivors, they're adapters par excellence. They've spread across their entire planet, inhabiting environments that should, by all rights, be completely inhospitable to them. He brought up images of various Earth biomes on the holographic display. Look at this. They live in frozen wastelands, scorching deserts, dense jungles, and even build floating cities on their oceans. It's like they took one look at the concept of a habitat niche and decided it was more of a suggestion than a rule. The mantis-like alien's voice took on a tone of grudging admiration. And when their environment doesn't suit them? They don't adapt themselves, oh no, that would be too easy. Instead, they adapt their environment to suit them, too cold. They'll create artificial heat. Too hot. They'll invent cooling systems. Not enough food. They'll figure out how to grow plants in places they have no business growing. A murmur of amazement rippled through the audience. But here's the truly mind-boggling part, Scrixel continued, his voice filled with a mix of awe and disbelief. Despite all their internal conflicts, despite their penchant for self-destruction, despite the fact that they're living on a planet that seems to be actively trying to kill them, half the time they not only survive, they thrive. He brought up a final image on the holographic display, a collage of human achievements, from ancient structures to modern marvels of engineering and art. These humans, with their paradoxical natures and their ability to turn disadvantages into strengths, they have achieved in a few thousand years what takes most species millions. They've gone from banging rocks together to sending probes to the edges of their solar system in less time than it takes some of us to decide on a lunch menu. Scrixel paused, looking around the now silent hall. Every being present was hanging on his every word, completely enraptured. Colleagues, friends, esteemed members of the Galactic System's chancellors, he said. His voice solemn. We stand at a crossroads. In that little blue marble, floating in its impossible void bubble, is a species unlike any we've encountered before. They are unpredictable, illogical, and at times frankly terrifying. But they are also innovative, resilient, and possess a potential that, quite frankly, boggles the mind. He straightened up, his exoskeleton gleaming under the lights. The question before us now is not whether we should make contact with these humans. The question is whether we're ready for them to make contact with us. A heavy silence fell over the hall as the implications of Scrixel's words sank in. Finally, Crystallos, the crystal moderator, chimed in. Scrixel, are you suggesting that these humans might pose a threat to the galactic community? Scrixel's antennae twitched thoughtfully. A threat? Perhaps. But also an opportunity. You see, these humans have a saying two heads are better than one now. Imagine what they could accomplish with a few million more heads or tentacles, or pseudopods, or whatever appendage you happen to think with. Excited murmurs began to fill the hall once more. But make no mistake, Scrixel cautioned, his tone serious. If we do decide to initiate contact, we need to be prepared. These humans, they're not just built different. They're playing an entirely different game, one where the rules seem to be more like guidelines, and impossible is treated as a personal challenge rather than a limitation. He looked around the room, meeting the eyes and other sensory organs of his colleagues. So, my friends, what say you? Shall we take a leap into the unknown? 
shall we welcome these chaotic, creative, utterly fascinating beings into our galactic community? Or shall we continue to observe from afar, watching as they inevitably break through their void bubble and come knocking on our cosmic door? The hall erupted into animated discussion. Ideas were exchanged, concerns were raised, and more than a few bets were placed on how long it would take the humans to accidentally blow up their first diplomatic meeting. As the debate raged on, Skrixel stood back, a sense of satisfaction washing over him. Whatever the outcome, he knew one thing for certain the galaxy was about to get a whole lot more interesting. And somewhere, on a little blue planet, in an impossible void bubble, a human sneezed. Bless you, said their friend. Thanks, the human replied. You know, I just had the strangest feeling, like someone somewhere was talking about me. The friend laughed. Maybe it's those aliens you're always going on about. Bet they're having a grand old time discussing our primitive species right now. Little did they know how right they were. Back in the Galactic System's Chancellor's Hall, the debate had reached a fever pitch. Species from across the cosmos were weighing in on the human question, each with their own unique perspective. A chronovore, its body a swirling mass of temporal energy, spoke up. I've glimpsed possible futures where these humans join our community. It's chaotic, to say the least, but also vibrant, full of possibilities we've never even considered. But at what cost countered a hive mind collective, its thousand voices harmonizing into a concerned buzz? These humans seem to thrive on conflict. How can we be sure they won't bring their wars to our peaceful galaxies? Skrixel, still standing at the podium, raised his segmented arms for attention. Esteemed colleagues, if I may, I believe we're asking the wrong questions here. It's not about whether humans are a threat or an opportunity. It's about whether we, as a galactic community, are ready for the change they represent. A murmur of intrigue rippled through the audience. Think about it, Skrixel continued, his antennae twitching with excitement. For eons we've explored the cosmos, catalogued countless species, and built a society based on logic, order, and predictability. And then along come these humans, breaking every rule we thought was unbreakable, thinking in ways we never considered possible. He paused, letting his words sink in. They're not just another species to study or potentially add to our ranks. They're a cosmic wake-up call, a reminder that the universe is vast and full of surprises. Can we honestly say we're prepared for that? The hall fell silent, as each being contemplated Skrixel's words. Finally, Crystallos, the crystal moderator, chimed in. Perhaps, Skrixel, the real question is not whether we're ready for humans, but whether we're ready to become more like them. A shocked gasp echoed through the hall. Hear me out, Crystallos continued, his crystalline form shimmering as he spoke. For all their flaws, these humans possess qualities we've long forgotten in our pursuit of galactic harmony. Creativity, adaptability, the courage to face the unknown, these are traits we once valued, before we became comfortable in our cosmic routines. A gaseous entity expanded thoughtfully. Are you suggesting we should? Embrace chaos. Not chaos, Crystallus clarified. Possibility. The humans haven't just survived in their void bubble, they've thrived. Perhaps it's time we pop our own metaphorical bubbles and remember what it's like to face the universe with wonder, rather than certainty. As the implications of this idea spread through the hall, a new energy began to build. Species that had been set in their ways for millennia found themselves considering new perspectives. Age-old rivalries were momentarily forgotten as discussions of human potential sparked novel ideas and collaborations. Skrixel watched it all unfold with a mixture of pride and amusement. He'd expected his presentation to cause a stir, but this, this was beyond his wildest dreams. Here quantum probability manipulator floated up to him, its form a shimmering cloud of potential realities. I've calculated the odds of this meeting's outcome, it said, its voice a whisper of a trillion possible words. The most likely result is. Skrixel held up a hand, stopping the being mid-sentence. No, my friend. For once let's not worry about probabilities and likely outcomes. Let's do as the humans do and embrace the unknown. The quantum probability manipulator paused, then condensed into a more solid form, a rare occurrence for its species. You know what? You're right. It's been too long since I've experienced genuine uncertainty. It's exhilarating. As the galactic system's chancellors continued their lively debate, a decision began to crystallize. It wasn't a choice to simply make contact with humans or not. It was a choice to evolve, 
to shake off the cosmic cobwebs and rediscover the spirit of exploration and innovation that had first driven them to the stars. Crystalos called for order, his crystalline form resonating with authority. Members of the Galactic System's Chancellors, we have before us an unprecedented opportunity. I propose we not only initiate contact with the humans, but also embark on our own journey of rediscovery. A wave of agreement swept through the hall. We will form a special task force. Crystallus continued, comprised of volunteers from every member species. This team will be our vanguard, the first to meet the humans and to learn from them. But more than that, they will be challenged to think like humans to question, to innovate, to dare greatly. Scrixel felt his exoskeleton tingle with anticipation. This was more than he could have hoped for. Those who wish to volunteer, please step forward, Crystallos announced. What happened next would be remembered in galactic histories for eons to come. Species that had been content to observe from afar for millennia suddenly found themselves eager to participate. Age-old enemies volunteered to work side by side, united by the prospect of new discoveries. Even Doctor. Zilblax, the gelatinous boar from the earlier presentation, oozed forward with unprecedented enthusiasm. As the volunteers assembled, Scrixel found himself at the centre of it all. Beings of all shapes, sizes and compositions approached him, eager to learn more about the humans and the strange new thinking they represented. Tell us more about their music urged a harmonic resonance being. How do they manage to sleep without losing consciousness entirely inquired a perpetually awake anagoid? Is it true they intentionally raise the temperature of plant matter before consuming it a cryogenic metabolizer asked, its icy form shuddering at the thought. Scrixel did his best to answer their questions, all the while marvelling at the transformation taking place before his eyes. The galactic community, which had been stagnating in its own perfection for eons, was coming alive with a new sense of purpose. As the meeting drew to a close and plans were set in motion, Scrixel found a moment of quiet to reflect. He gazed out at the star-studded expanse visible through the hall's panoramic windows, his compound eyes taking in the cosmic tapestry. You know came a voice beside him, belonging to Christolos, when you first approached the High Council with this project eight stellar cycles ago. I thought you were, as the humans might say, off your rocker. Scrixel's mandibles clicked in amusement. Believe me, there were times I thought the same. And yet here we are Christolos mused, his crystalline form reflecting the starlight. On the brink of a new era for our entire civilization, all because of a species living in a bubble that, by all rights, shouldn't exist. Life finds a way, Scrixel quoted, remembering a human phrase he'd come across in his research. Or in this case, life makes its own way, logic and probability be damned. Crystalos chimed softly, his equivalent of a chuckle. Indeed. You know, Scrixel, I have a feeling that meeting these humans is going to be just the beginning. They may be confined to their little blue planet for now, but beings like that. They won't stay in one place for long. Scrixel nodded his antennae twitching with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. You're right, and when they do venture out into the cosmos, they're going to turn everything upside down. And we'll be ready for them, Cristalos said with determination. Or at least, as ready as anyone can be for a species that treats the impossible as a mere suggestion. As they stood there, gazing out at the vast expanse of the universe, Scrixel couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation, unlike anything he'd experienced in his long life. The galactic community was about to embark on its greatest adventure yet, all thanks to a peculiar species on a little blue planet in an impossible void bubble. Somewhere out there, humanity was going about its daily business, blissfully unaware of the cosmic stir they'd caused. They were arguing about trivial matters, creating breathtaking works of art, pursuing scientific breakthroughs, and generally being their paradoxical, wonderful selves. And the universe, in all its infinite wisdom, seemed to hold its breath in anticipation, for the humans were coming, and nothing would ever be the same again.